Welcome to our table of plenty. <laughs> so much good food. I love it. And tell us who's joining us today. I'm going yeah. in a second, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> joining us today for my parents right over there. These are John's real biological parents, yeah, yeah. as far as he knows. I'd yes. also like to point out that uh, that bottle was full when we yeah. started. Yeah. <laughs> it was and they're drinking the answer. real stuff. Yeah. First of all, that is uh, my mom, Marion. Hi. She's a slut. <laughs> John, I didn't know and there's my, and there's, and, and there's my, that's my dad, John, and he's. <laughs> Him. I've been sleeping with your mother for years. <laughs> That's right. You've been dictating to her a long time. You said 57 years, right? Yes. Yeah. That's a long 57 time. 57 years. I've stuck him for 57 years. <laughs> That's how I'm knowing this. <laughs> Isn't he sticking I you? I don't know. for 57 years. <laughs> what did you say? I stuck her for 57 yeah. years. This is going to be a fun day. <laughs> right now, let's run down our favorite Thanksgiving videos ever. We're going around the net. <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> Why don't I? <laughs> First up, an area field reporter gives us living proof that around this time of year, any turkey can make the news. Mm. <laughs> All right. Oh. circling around my car. Oh my god, there he is. <laughs> Ooh, they can sense fear and gravy. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't know what that woman's problem was. I would die for that much attention on Thanksgiving. <laughs> My favorite part of that video is when the, the turkey comes up and then it goes back around and then it just like pops up out of nowhere, just like, I'm keeping my eye on you, lady. Maybe, love, love, maybe love someone that. like puts that uh, that whole sequence to like Jurassic Park music. I was gonna say, it reminds me of the Jurassic Park, what, what is the, uh, oh, no. the dinosaur that goes, the, the yeah. You do really good, do it, Sarah, I mean, do, do it. I do, it. I do. Yeah, do one more time. Right. Down the lines. There There's you go. There's a treat for you, people. <laughs> <laughs> she really does look you know, like uh, What's funny about that, Sarah, is if you actually, if you go up to my desk, I do an excellent Dennis Nedry. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Mom. Who's Dennis Nedry? He's Wayne Knight in the movie. The guy Who's that Wayne gets the spray of the Dilophosaurus <laughs> in his oh, face. Oh, that guy. Oh, yeah, I could see uh, that. I could see oh, that I you could be a Dennis Nedry. every other Thanksgiving. Uh, no. Oh, okay. you want to do it? <laughs> no, she doesn't even want no. to do it. All right. She's, she's busy with her sherry. <laughs> Let's get through the rest of that bottle. Wait, She'll be doing it in no time. Uh-uh-uh. Um, uh -uh. You didn't say the magic yeah. word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, next up, a 2008 interview with Sarah Palin on a turkey farm. Now, see if you can pay attention to a single word she says. <laughs> For one, you need a little bit of levity in this job, especially with uh, uh, so much that has gone on in the last couple of months that has been so... Um, political, obviously, that it's nice to get out and, and, and do something to promote a local business and, and to uh, just participate in something that isn't so uh, heavy-handed politics that uh, it invites criticism. Certainly we'll probably invite criticism for even doing this, too, but at least this was fun. And what is it that you're thankful for this year? Oh, so thankful for the health and happiness of my family, that my son Stryker Brigade is safe over there in Iraq, relatively safe, and school's going well for the kids, and Trig is happy and healthy. Just very thankful for um, the health and happiness of my family. Excuse me. She's going that from all the papers she reads. What? 
She reads a lot of paper, newspapers, that's where she got that. <laughs> Disgusted Does right anyone now. else feel sick after that? Yeah. Yes, I feel so sorry for that turkey. I don't. I would have done the same thing if I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't talking about the turkey. I'm talking about Sarah Palin. <laughs> Just stick, stay stick. in Alaska. Yes. <laughs> Just, well, well, Just stay in Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> What I'm most thankful for is that she didn't win. Yeah. 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 She's the only tough in Alaska. All right. Here's a scary look at the little known but extremely intimidating Fourth Reich. Hey, Ahani! She's in a ship with me! Oh, you don't know what I'm saying? Everybody's up in a lot! Get out of here! Mother's up in a lot! <laughs> Laugh all you want, but they're all dead. Oh. Oh, it's so and they, sad. And they, I, I love that guy's book, Mein Kampf Rotisserie. <laughs> Hitler and a turkey. <laughs> Difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult to be eating this turkey right now and watching all these sad yeah. turkey videos. I am having no trouble at I all. I know you're not. <laughs> I know you're not. Who's the dark person that picked these videos for Thanksgiving? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Candace. She sits down every oh, day. Yeah, these are your videos. before you had a turkey sitting in front of you, weren't they? Okay, and finally, <laughs> we take a trip to Yellville, Arkansas for the annual turkey trot. It's a simple folksy event in which a live turkey is dropped from an airplane oh. over a crowd of hungry people. <laughs> Catch your ski first. Oh. plane was not the worst thing that happened to that turkey. No. Where but is our humanity? Like, that's just, that, that whole thing just disgusts me. It disgusts me, too. I can't imagine. I'm pretty sure that was the pilot for Honey Boo Boo Child. <laughs> <laughs> I can see, I can see that. <laughs> your, your dad got a kick out of that one. <laughs> Excuse me, the old folks sitting over here, where's the turkey? We didn't get it. Here, take my mom over some turkey. For the pensioners, here. Yeah. For the pensioners. The next move oh, for us is the old folks' home. Mom, if you're Don't lucky... Don't my shoes. I got slippers, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, if you're lucky, I'll send you, you I'll piece. send you down south and you can grab one chucked out of an airplane <laughs> in the sky. Take however much you want. Wow. You can have more than that. That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> they have like the smallest piece of turkey ever. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> still, still ahead, Matt Myra whips out the new Falcon Northwest yeah. laptop. How does it rate? All season long, beat the autumn chill with me and Sarah Underwood as we turn up the heat with more special guest hosts like Paul Shear, Matt Myra, Damian Fahey, and Michael Costa. Hey! It's Attack of the Show every weeknight at 7, 6 central right here on G4. Welcome back to Attack of the Show, Thanksgiving Yay! episode. Yay! Uh, Matt Myra, how are you? Mm, good. You're not in a turkey coma yet, are you? No. I'm trying to finish out the stuffing. But today, what? John, 
Is this awesome day? It is. It's not awesome day. It's pretty good day. Uh, last week we recommended the Falcon Northwest Tiki desktop. Remember that computer, That's right? right? The nice blue one that I beautiful, liked. beautiful computer, right? Mm -hmm. For the holiday buying season. Yeah. And we didn't have time to talk about their TLX laptop, so today we are giving it the full review treatment. Oh. Yeah. Hey. Let's get right into it. And uh, to do that, I'm just going to have to move Thanksgiving. Oh help? boy, time for work. <laughs> Here we go, everybody. This is it. Uh, we see a lot of 17-inch gaming laptops out there. Those feel ridiculously huge, right? Yep. Here's what Falcon did. 15-inch gaming nice. laptop. Nice. Huh? It's, uh, it's nice. It's a refreshing size for, for a gaming laptop. Other PC manufacturers, take note. There are no stupid stickers on this thing either, okay? Yeah. yeah, look at that. Of course, you'll notice the custom paint job. That does cost extra, but you can get anything you want on there, including John Barrowman's balls. Oh. I have no doubt about that. I don't either. <laughs> They've been out a few times. I'm sure you just Google it, you'll find it. Yep. Uh, there's also a ton of ports on here. You get three USB ports, eSATA, which is rare on a laptop, DVI, and HDMI out. So pretty much every port that was on the Tiki desktop, yeah. minus seven USB ports. <laughs> well, well, listen, if you fill the Tiki desktop's 10 USB ports, I will personally give you $4. $4? First come, first serve. Uh. Only one person's getting $4. I just lost my job. <laughs> <laughs> So this is this is the 15 inch and with a 17 inch because we did see one yeah. before that was massively huge. Yeah, the huge. digital storm. Yeah, exactly. So uh, does that? How's the screen perform on this? The screen's actually pretty great on this. It's 1920 by 1080, so you're getting full high definition. Uh, it's also glossy, so I like that a lot. You get nice color saturation. Yeah. So it really pops and it looks. It's a great. It's a great looking screen. And again, the size, excellent. So if you're gonna take this out on a laptop. I won't punch you in the face on a, if you take it out on the airplane. Yeah, no, that's it's much better to sit there. If you there, take you... out a 17 inch on an airplane, I will punch you in the face. I don't care if there might be an air marshal. <laughs> <laughs> Please let me be there when you do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, is this is this okay? <laughs> Look, this, is this okay to plug into uh, any of the airline, you know, uh, ports sure, and stuff? Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. You can plug it in uh, on Virgin America, which I fly a lot, and I need to go home for the holidays, and I just lost my job. Virgin America. Ding! We love you, Virgin America. I hear you fly direct to Boston. Thank you. Now, because it's smaller, does it is it less powerful than a 17-inch? No, actually, they, they compared to a 17-inch, sure, it's going to be a little bit less powerful, but this is plenty of power in here. There's a 2.8 quad giga, uh, quad core i7 processor, 2.8 gigahertz, 8 gigs of RAM, a 4 gig NVIDIA GTX 680, and that hardware is fast enough to run the latest games with no problem whatsoever. We played the new Counter-Strike. Take a look at that. Counter-Strike Global Offensive runs nice and smooth, no drop frames, no jittery thing. No situation where the guy might jump off a thing and then get stuck in midair. That's not going to happen on here. The game is running the old Half-Life uh, engine, so it's it's not the most demanding. But there's still a lot of graphics this has to run, and it does it with no problem. And I have no doubt that with this system configured the way that it is we have here, uh, no problem running the best PC games for years to come. Okay, having said that... I don't know what's so funny. This is gadget prod, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like a true family Thanksgiving table. There's all the hysteria going on over here. Have you just choked? Yes, are you going to hurl? She didn't Necklace prawn over here. We got gadget prawn. <laughs> What's the battery life on this? Well, Necklace let me tell you, battery life. The last thing we looked at, that 17-inch guy, one-hour gaming life. That's this terrible. doubled it. Two hours of Whoa. continuous gaming. So you could fly all the way to Seattle and play most of the time. Yeah. All right. Well, it sounds better. Yeah, sounds good. Right. And it's much smaller. Yeah. You, you get the Falcon Northwest uh, TLX laptop starting at two thousand three hundred dollars. That's pretty good. Matt right. Myra, what are you giving this in the ratings? Well, maybe it's because it's Thanksgiving and I just want to give thanks for a great laptop. We're giving it a five out of five. Oh! Oh! It is a great deal. The guys at Falcon Northwest really know what they're doing. I have <laughs> fallen in love with these machines, and uh, I'm going to say uh, I just might get rid of my Apple for this. Oh! That's heavy. That's, crazy. That's heavy. That's heavy. All right, uh, Dad, what do you think? Would you rather have a, a 15 inch or a 17 inch? Well, I've managed all my life for the 10 inch. <laughs> wow. On that, that note, <laughs> I, I would like to point out that your dad also has a flask in his hand. <laughs>
stereotype I had about the Scots is correct. <laughs> and you know what, son? We're damn proud of it. We are right. Go on yourself. That is it for today's Gadget Prong, guys. It's still ahead. Matt Ferrer takes a tricked out Zion for a test drive. Stick around. The Wii U came out earlier this week, and we've got the skinny on what you need to know. First, if you weren't able to get your hands on the console already, you might have to pay a few more bucks if you still want one. Oh, no. Forbes is reporting that the console is sold out in most American stores, and that thousands of Wii U's have already been posted on eBay, some selling for as much as $500. So if you absolutely cannot wait a few days until the stores are restocked, well, don't cry to me about it. You made your bed when you got addicted to video games, and now you have to lie in it, all right? Yeah. Yeah. Tell, I am telling them. Thank you, I am. And for anyone who has yet to install the day one update, be careful when you do, because the LA Times is reporting that the update has the potential to brick your console. The one gigabyte installation grants access to Wii U Chat, the Miiverse, the eShop, and takes about two hours to download. But if you attempt to turn off or reset your console while it's updating, it will freeze the download and brick the system. A womp womp. <laughs> Say it. You just Who's that? CNN reporter. That just was say it a wop wop. It was deliberate again. again. Just please do it again. again. Just go wop wop. No, you all just laughed at me. Because it was funny. Sarah, it's it wasn't supposed to be funny. Do do it. It. it wasn't right. supposed to be do funny. It. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is just on. like every Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Yelling with disappointment. All right, Candace, I have a story for you. Oh, you do? I do. R. Kelly is bringing his famed hip hop ra. To Broadway. Yes! Broadway! Earlier this week, the singer was at a premiere showing off his latest installments to the Trapped in the Closet <laughs> saga when he told those in attendance that he'd been offered to do a Broadway version. Yes! He went on to say he is in the process of negotiating a deal, but that he can't say for sure when the fans could expect to see the show. Oh. Meanwhile, the folks at Alamo Draft House have teamed up with IFC to bring the first 22 chapters of Trapped in the Closet to theaters across yes! the country. Yes! <laughs> to see if it's playing in a theater near you, check out actionpackent.com. I am Sarah Underwood, and you've just been fed right now, though. Time to prove to you how much Matt Farah likes cars. This is the Scion FRS. You've seen it before here on this very program, and we learned that the FRS is a car meant for fun, not for outright speed. Some of the things that make the FRS fun for an entry-level sports car also make it slower. For instance, the engine. It's low and the car is wide, which means it'll handle great, good balance, good steering feel. But at just 200 horsepower, at the end of the day, it's not that fast. Also, the tires. Michelin Primacy HP. They're from the sport package on a Prius. So it's a balance between handling and fuel economy. Now, Scion says that this car is meant to be an entry-level project to kind of customize it any way you see fit. Today, we're going to find out how some of those modifications, hopefully, make the FRS go faster. The stock FRS is a great car to learn how to drive fast in. It's responsive, agile, and most importantly, very easy to find the limit and drive past it at safe speeds. But out on the track, with the Michelin tires sliding around, you have to make a lot of corrections mid-corner to go as fast as possible. 2,800 pounds, not much weight to move around. And you can hear the tires squealing, but they're not really wearing down at all. The tuned FRS is clearly much stickier in the corners. It goes wherever you stick it, every time. On the other hand, the car's a bit heavier than stock, especially in the unsprung department, and the standard size disc brakes no longer work as well as when they were stock, despite the upgraded rotors and pads. Yeah, wow, the sticky tires make a world of difference in this car. 
I think with a properly set up big brake kit, this car could easily be another two seconds per lap faster. What I'm gonna do today is run five laps on the track in the stock FRS and then five laps in the modified one. If the Car Guy Nation car is tuned properly, it should pick up one to three seconds per lap over the stock car. Best lap wins. Stock FRS. It's got a pretty wide footprint. And it's really easy to feel the difference between when it's going to understeer and when it's going to oversteer. Everything comes through to the wheel pretty well. This is one of the safest, most fun cars out there to slide around because everything happens at a much lower speed. Drifting while chasing a car is very tricky. This Scion FRS, built by Car Guy Nation for the SEMA show. It's focused more on handling and sound than it is ultimate power. Now the question is, what will my lap time be? Let's get to the time, shall we? The stock FRS ran a 1 minute and 30 second even lap, whereas the tuned Car Guy Nation SEMA FRS ran a 1 minute 28.7, a savings of 1.3 seconds using some basic bolt-on parts. But the question here is, which do I like better? They each have their uh, ups and downs, let's say. This one, not as fast as this one, but it slides around, and I like that. This car is faster, more stable through the corners, and grippier, but at the same time, it doesn't dance the way the stock car does with the hard tires. So if going faster is your thing, that works, absolutely. But if sliding around and drifting is your thing, these stock tires are definitely the way to go. television to find out what to watch. <laughs> wah, wah. Please welcome LA Bureau Chief for TV Guide Magazine, Michael Schneider, and an actor and writer for Geek Magazine, Nikki Griffin. Okay, Michael, hey. uh, First off, Arrested Development returns in, with new episodes. Yes, okay. yes. Are you, are you looking forward to that? I'm completely looking forward to it. It's been a long time coming, six years. Yeah, that's right. And so do, do the original episodes still hold up? They do, actually. I mean, if anything, whenever I see Will Arnett, I still think of Job, and I think we all do. And honestly, during this past election, I kept thinking about the Bluths and who would be, <laughs> who would be in the, you know, the 1%, the Romney camp, the 47%, or, you know, like, you, you think of the Bluths even now. And so... It's really exciting to have them coming back. So you don't think it's going to be difficult for them to pick up, uh, you know, and, and, and start afresh? Well, you know, I think, you know, the, the fans of the show are uber fans, and they've kept up with it. This is something that everyone's been looking forward to for years. And the great thing is the, the shows are, the, are all available, so hopefully people are kind of catching up to them. Gotcha. Such as during the holiday season. Yes, And good. we'll be ready to go when those new episodes come sometime in 2013. Okay, and, and Nikki, you re uh, recommend going back and watching uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, whether you've, you've seen it before or not. Right, I do, only because Joss Whedon's had an amazing year. I mean, he's had Avengers, uh, they just announced The Shield, Cabin in the Woods, he was writer on. Yeah. Uh, even Dr. Horrible Sing Along Blog has a new life on the CW. So he's just had an amazing year, and to see how some of the stuff plays over from Buffy into all of the things that are coming out so now. So you think he, do you think he's like learned something from doing Buffy that is then bled into uh, the new stuff that he's doing? Absolutely. On on Buffy, he he had a great job of writing for a lot of different characters. Mm -hmm. And with the Avengers, obviously, he did such an amazing job giving each character their own storyline and having equal time for most of them. You know, it, it was it was I thought it was an amazing job. And Buffy really holds up too. I mean, yeah, Buffy definitely holds well, up. Well, Buffy's I mean, Buffy's huge. I still you know do uh, the conventions and I go to all the different cons and that's one show that no matter you know, there's like one out of three people that always talk about Buffy. It's all, yeah. it's, it's made a huge, yeah. huge impact. Well, and Firefly just celebrated its 10th anniversary, and that's, that's, right. that's a show that, you know, was never a huge hit, but there had were only such how a many following. episodes of Firefly? It was something, there was like, a, it was just one season. 
that was it. Yeah. And a movie. Yeah, and a movie, exactly. Yeah, but the movie didn't do as well as the as the series did. I mean, the movie for fans did really well, but for the general public, it didn't really do very very well. Right. Unfortunately, it's more of a cult hit. Yeah. Right. They have a rabid, rabid following. I mean, they they had reunions at both the Comic Cons in New York and in San Diego, and it was just people crying and you know <laughs> making a scene. It was it was bananas. Literally. Which is awesome. It was just amazing. <laughs> totally, totally love it. Totally. All right. Now the BBC has a, a new show called uh, Misfits, which has been on the BBC for a little bit. Um, it's been compared to Buffy. Do you uh, tell us what the series is about? Um, I would only say it's like Buffy in the in the way that it has it's it's witty, mm. like Buffy was witty. Um, Joss is a very witty writer. There's there's humor in the horror, and um, the show is about these. Uh, delinquent British kids that are uh, doing community service. So they're at a community service center and there's a huge storm that gives them all special powers. And they are navigating their lives now with these special powers and like the good and bad that comes with it. Have you seen it, Michael? I haven't. I'm embarrassed to say I haven't. But don't I, be, embar I, don't but be embarrassed. I live in the United Kingdom. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> okay, I won't call Nikki out on some of the shows she hasn't seen yet. We're... Please don't. Okay. No, don't worry. Don't okay. worry. Is there any other uh, British stuff that you would recommend that's coming up that people should watch out for or look back on over the holiday? Have you heard of this show called Torchwood? I have somewhat. Is that called Kissing Up to the Host? I'm <laughs> sorry. But... It is, but you know what? Kiss away, Michael. <laughs> I, you know, well, yeah. obviously, Torchwood, Doctor Who, yes. Luther uh, is a fantastic show. Luther's great. Um, and, uh, you know, Downton Abbey's coming back for a third season on PBS soon, so if you haven't caught up yet, you, know, you better now so you have something to talk about with My the... mother's applauding. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you have yeah. something to talk about with your, your parents and your family come the holidays. I, I actually have a confession to make. Because I live in the UK, I I've already seen uh, series three, and I, you know, I've already everything that you guys have yet to see. I already know what happens, and all I'll say a little spoiler here, but I'm not going to tell you much. Get your tissues ready. <laughs> that could oh, go, shut up! That could go either way. That's it could go either way. It really could. It really could. Well, um, I was going to say, what about uh, uh, damages? I mean, this is like totally random, but someone mentioned to me that have you seen damages? Yeah, yeah. It, someone mentioned to me that it's a really good series to download and watch and look back on. Well, that's the thing now is there are a lot of great shows like that, and and Breaking Bad's another good example of a show yeah. that if you haven't seen it yet, it's coming back in June, and now's the time to binge watch. Um, there, there's so many shows now to binge. That's the new thing with your Netflix and, and DVD. I love that word, binge watch. Yeah, right. yeah. All right, so last, last question up here. The Wire, um, some will argue it's the best uh, TV show on television. Uh, for those who are still holding out, convince them why they should watch The Wire. Well, it is one of the best shows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do, you, oh, me, do we have a disagreement? <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually haven't watched The Wire. All right, so, I'm, so I'm tell it. Well, tell us. No, it is, it is, it, ah. I mean, it is a perfectly crafted show. And, and the, the great thing is there were only 60 episodes, so it's actually an easy show to sort of jump into. Every season was sort of self-contained. Uh, every season told a different story about life in Baltimore uh, from the, the criminal's perspective, from the journalism perspective, from the school's perspective, the politicians. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very dense, uh, deep show, but it's fantastic, and it's, it's on a big box set that you can get for the Which holidays. Which we love, and I'm so, sensing you're a fan. So it's a good show. I would, I would check it out if you haven't already. And again, you know, it's, that's the great thing about cable is, you know, these short seasons. So it went for five seasons, but it's only six. Episodes. You can, you can do yourself a favor and check it out. Sold? Yeah, I'm sold. You know, actually, I was a huge fan of Terriers, uh, which is another Sean Ryan show. So I campaigned mercilessly on Twitter and wrote letters to the network to try to save that show. Um, so The Wire is something, yeah, a lot. Well, the great thing is TV shows never die now. They, I know. They, no, they don't. They're around, they are around forever. Yes. Just like these two sitting over there. <laughs> They're always there. <laughs> what, uh, what, Mom, Dad, what, what are you going to be watching over the holidays? Anything in particular? What are you looking forward to in television? Don't turn. Downton Abbey. Abbey. Yes. Right. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. He wants to be winning the Super Bowl. What? Oh, the oh, Super Bowl. Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll leave it at that much. Thanks to Michael. We have Nikki for helping us find what to watch, everybody. Stay tuned. The father of the Marvel Universe will be here next. Mr. Stan Lee swings by in just a minute. If you're like us, you're still addicted to Borderlands 2. And now you can keep exploring the lands of Pandora even when you're away from your computer or TV with Borderlands Legends. All four of your favorite characters from the original are here, and you control all of them simultaneously as you fend off wave after wave of enemies. 
Defeat bad guys to collect in-game cash, which you can then use to purchase new weapons. Remember, this is a Borderlands game. That means even on the iPad, you'll have access to thousands and thousands of guns. Complete missions to earn experience and level up characters, which unlocks new skills and abilities. Each character has nine unique powers, equaling 36 total powers between them. So if you still can't get enough of the shoot 'em up franchise to fulfill your unquenchable thirst for bloodlust, pick up Borderlands Legends for your iDevice starting at $5. Yeah! Spoiler, he did not get superpowers. Oh, wah, wah, wah. Please welcome legendary comic book creator Stan Lee. Yeah. I have no problem with that. Stan Lee, everybody! I, I have to say, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm having a fanboy moment sitting here with you because it's, uh, it's just great. I feel like I'm amongst the Messiah, don't you? Yeah. yeah. I can, Absolutely. I can understand that. Good, good. All right, so you've created uh, uh, Verticus, which is uh, something that's new for mobile devices. Uh, tell us exactly what Verticus is. Verticus is an adventurer and a hero, and it's his job to go from way up there to the very bottom of the earth to save mankind because there's an explosive down there that will blow up the planet. Whoa. So, I mean, this is no kidding around kind of game. It never is. <laughs> it is. No, and I'm, I'm, I'm hooked already. It's, it sounds amazing. Now, how, when you came up, how, how did you always want to do something for, you know, the mobile devices or something that is a little more now and current? Ever since I was a little kid, I said, someday they're going to invent these mobile devices. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to want to be at the forefront. <laughs> and luckily, I had my opportunity when the the deal was offered to me, would I be part of this? And I just thought the name was so great, the game was so great, the theme was so great, and I could come in, lend my name, and take all the credit as I usually do. <laughs> That's the way it should be. Of course. Now, you've, you've created many, many uh, comic book characters over the years. Is it difficult coming up with characters with new superpowers or something that's completely different? It's incredibly difficult. Luckily, I'm extremely talented, but it is a very <laughs> difficult thing to do. As there times people come to you with stuff and you, you know, obviously they would want you to look at them and get your advice on them of and course. your opinions. Are there times you look at it and just think, how am I going to let them down? Um, no, I let people down all the time. I am one of the biggest disappointments to people when they no. finally meet me. <laughs> no, I don't mean that. No, I'm like, if they, do you ever tell someone this is not really good, go away and work on it a little more? You know, that's the toughest thing to say. People are giving me ideas all the time for comic books, for digital comics, for games, and... They're not all good ideas, mm -hmm. but how do you tell somebody who is so enthusiastic and he's been working on it and he's waiting for you to say, I love it, let me do it. it that is probably the toughest part of my job. And you mentioned in, uh, when you were saying there about digital comics, are you worried that the digital age is going to push aside, uh, you know, proper comic books? Because th not, those of us who still love to collect them, we still do. Yeah. I'm not worried about it because whatever comes along to replace something else, the thing that came along is usually even more exciting. But I think there'll always be comic books. They just won't be as big as they were years ago. But these digital comics, they're wonderful. And people want to see their pictures move and be able to create special effects themselves by control. Wait till you see what the digital comics are going to turn into in a little while. Well, aren't you going to tell us a little bit here on no, AOCS? We're, we're talking about Invictus, and I'll get in trouble if I don't. Or rather, Verticus. Verticus. Invictus. That's all right. See, it's my Roman training. Um, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to give any secrets away. Never. I don't give secrets away. Okay. But the characters that you've uh, uh, created, a lot of other characters and other superheroes, they live in fake cities. And you've always chosen to mostly put your characters in real cities. Is there any reasoning, you know, behind that? Or is it just something that you decided one day, that's it, I'm going to do it? Yeah, I didn't know how to spell those phony cities. <laughs> New York I was familiar with. But Gotham City, I don't know, and... Uh, Metropolis, and they didn't sound real to me. New York, that's a place. Los Angeles, 
Ch Chillicothe, Ohio. Beat that. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, the when you jumping back, or even now, uh, someone told me that you, when you're with the panel and you're working on a new comic or you're working with somebody, sometimes to get them to do what the to, to you have to jump up on you act out what the character does sometimes. Oh, well, I was the art director, and I've always been a ham. And sometimes I'd want the artist to draw a special thing and. I felt I gotta show him what I mean. And if it meant jumping on a couch or hanging from the chandelier or whatever it was, I did it. You know, I think this is the way the guy, I'll never forget. Um, I, Jack Kirby, I think it was, he was drawing Dr. Doom, one yeah, of our top yeah, villains, yes. who's the king of his own country and very scary. He's like Darth Vader. And he was sitting in a chair and he was saying something. And I said, no, no, that's not the way Dr. Doom would sit in the chair. He'd sit like this, you know, whatever it was. And I, it, I, I love doing that. The guys hated it because I'm so corny, but they put up with it. I was going to say, does it ever, does anyone ever kind of go, he's doing it again? I'm sure they did all the time. <laughs> all right, now the other thing that a lot of uh, superheroes are becoming, they're, we're getting to see kind of the darker side and, you know, like gritty things mm. about them. You are not a fan of that, are you? Well, I'm not a very gritty guy, as you can tell. But there's a place for the darker side characters and a place, see, for example, a movie like The Avengers, they're not darker side. They're just the guys you like and they're in action. They're fighting the bad guys. That's the formula I prefer. We are able. We had Doctor Strange. There'll be a Doctor Strange movie eventually. He will have a little more of the darker side. Right. There's room for them both. But um, And I like them both. But I'm more comfortable with the Avengers or Iron Man type of, of story. So am I. And I absolutely love them. And I also know, you know, I love when I see you in your little cameo roles in films. I think no, that... that's what makes the film. <laughs> Well, he said it, everybody. Thanks to Stan Lee for stopping by. You can download Verticus now on the iTunes App Store. And for more information on the game, you can visit Moonshark.com. Coming up next, drive cars through zombies in indie games. Oh. Nice. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Sounds dangerous, but I'm in. On the next Attack of the Show, Matt Myra takes over as co-host for the week. And I'll be chatting it up with the always funny Brett Gelman about his sitcom Go On. Then on DVD Tuesday, Chris Gore rates the latest discs to hit shelves, including Paranorman and Lawless. Plus, Matt gets his hands on the 24 megapixel DSLR, the Nikon D600 on Gadget Farm. And in What to Watch, Jonah Ray and Doug Benson are here to round up the best films and shows. Coming up next week on AOTS. Holidays almost here, budgets are gonna be a little tight. So to keep you gaming, here are three downloadable titles that won't bust the wallet. First off, put the pedal to the metal with Zombie Driver HD. In this top-down driving shooter, humanity has succumbed to the walking dead, and it is up to you to race around the city and rescue its citizens. Completing missions unlocks new vehicles like sports cars and tanks, each with different armor, carrying capacity and speed. And as you mow down hordes of the undead, you will earn cash, which you can use to upgrade your car's stats and weapons like rockets, flamethrowers, and machine guns. For additional fun, you can also go online and compete in various races or take your zombie killing skills into an arena for full-on undead destruction. With over 30 story missions and dozens of races, Zombie Driver HD is a must-have for only 10 bucks on Xbox Live. But if you prefer a little less blood and guts in your gaming, step into the artistic world of the unfinished Swan. In this first-person explorer, you're a young orphan who travels into a canvas left by your mother to track down a magical swan. Initially, the world is a blank slate, but your ability to sling balls of paint quickly brings the surroundings and world to life. As you follow the clues left by the swan, a gorgeous fairy tale slowly unfolds as you discover what happened to the world and its kingdom. But it's not all just about throwing paint. 
You'll have to solve various platforming puzzles, ranging from using water to grow vines, which will give you access to rooftops, as well as guiding a glowing ball through the darkness to keep spiders from killing you. Short and sweet, the unfinished swan is perfect for any fan of art house games like Journey or Flower. You can snag it on the PlayStation Network for $15. <laughs> And finally, for all you side-scrollers, prepare to put your puzzle-solving skills to the test with PID. In this Limbo Portal hybrid, you're a young boy who has been left on a mysterious planet and must find a way to get home. Luckily, you have the ability to throw gravity orbs. When stuck to a surface, they reverse the flow of gravity, which will allow you to reach out-of-the-way areas, float enemies out of your path, or help you navigate past pitfalls and spikes. Puzzles are numerous and will require a lot of trial and error to defeat. Luckily, save points are plentiful, and none of the puzzles are so frustrating as to leave you with a broken controller. If you're ready to put your platforming skills to the test, you can pick up PID on Xbox Live for 10 bucks. Automobiles is a bad way to get home for Thanksgiving. Check out this. What? Check out <laughs> this guy does it. John, thank you so much for being here. We have yeah. loved yeah. you. You stuck it out longer than any other guest host. Well, so. can, I, can I just say, first off, thank you to you, Candace, for a lot, and you guys, Sarah and Matt, for allowing me to come into what is your big family. Uh, I've totally enjoyed myself. First off, thank you to all uh, who work here in the floor because we get to sit in front of the camera and have a good time, but these guys actually do all the hard work. Every day, uh, I've been going into the writing room with the writers, and you actually think, the producers and everybody think we've been going in to write, but this is actually what we get up to in the writing room. Roll this little video for us. Dude, it gave my style. <laughs> The dog butt scratch. <laughs> I just want to point out if you uh, if you watch that video back at home, uh, Blair Butler has having none of it. <laughs> she couldn't. She is having none of it. She couldn't. She was holding too much stuff. But the other thing is that uh, uh, I um, just want to say I think it's a shame that uh, this show is going because it fills a niche and there's a lot of people out there who like it and we need to find another network to bring it back. So that's my little bet. <laughs> Kind of the show with a traditional thank you, uh, a Scottish, uh, you know, uh, kind of well wishing for the Thanksgiving. I've got whiskey shots for everybody in the house. Oh, hey. and my, my dad will deliver. If you, everybody grabs one, this is. Uh, yeah. My dad will deliver this thank you, and it's it's a little bit of a thank Scottish you. grace. And look at you know, anytime we need help, no one's there, but there's whiskey. <laughs> They're all coming for it. <laughs> Everybody got, has awesome. to have a glass. Gather around the table. I love this. Come on, Dad. If you want to stand up, Dad, and look down camera, camera three, Dad, you've got to st go ahead and read. Now, go it's, ahead. It's called the Selkirk Grace. Go ahead. Some he meet and canna eat, and some would eat that want it, but we he meet and we can eat, and say the Lord be thank it. Yay! Yeah. Thank you very much for making me part of the AOTS family. And thank you. Thanksgiving, everybody! And thank you to all of you for tuning in and watching. It's been great fun, and hopefully, we'll see you all like this, but on another network. Thank you.